Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology forecast. Yes, Georgia, you are here too, by my side, as usual. Hello, Georgia. Oh, you're so sweet. You're so sweet. Yes, can you hear her purring? I'm not sure you can. Anyway, I'm here with the astrological message or forecast for the week between the 16th and the 23rd of March 2019. So I'm talking about celestial weather that affects all zodiac signs and how to better walk through this week. What do we have in the heavens this time? It's an amazing week in the heavens. On the one hand, we begin this week with a state in the heavens that is still very Neptunic. It's a bit more lethargic. It's going towards spirit and art and it's a much more feminine energy it's a time that we can get carried away or that we can get encapsulated in our own minds and hearts in our own universe so to speak seeking atonement and things that are more subtle right georgia you're very subtle today and uh if, if my wife sees what you're doing with your nails, that isn't so subtle uh, on her chairs anyway. So, um, but there's also a Mercury square Jupiter in the sky, which means that we need to watch that we're not too upfront about things, that we're not too direct or untactful, that we're not saying too much, that we're not too hasteful in getting there, wherever there is. But we're finishing this week with a Mercury sextile Saturn, which is amazing for business. It's amazing for bringing home the bacon, from rooting th for rooting things in the ground, for progressing, pro what's going on with me? Progressing things in your career, in the social and public realms of your life. And from Wednesday, actually from Tuesday onwards, we're having this blast of energy in the sky. We're having this heightening of energy towards the uh, vernal equinox in the northern side of this globe. And on the Saturn hemisphere, it's the, it's the autumnal equinox. It's the time that day and night are almost equal. And we are starting, at least in the northern side of the globe, to get more daylight as days lengthen towards summer that begins at the end of June, beginning of July. This is the beginning of the astrological year, March 20th, as the sun ingresses into the sign of Aries. So Happy New Year, everybody, and may we have a wonderful astrological year. <coughs> all of us and as we look on the chart that begins this astrological year we get a sense of what the year is like this time what is it going to be like what it what ambience does it carry and we're walking through a phase of several years that um, began when uh, the sun used to be conjunct uranus um, in the astrological new year, that's I'm talking about the uh, 2008 um, economical crisis and these years all through a bit before, a bit after, and then as we're heading to 2013 already, uh, uh, Chiron, the wounded healer, starts conjuncting the sun. And it's conjuncting the sun also on this new year as it was in the last new year and as it is going to be until uh, 2022 and this is a time that we are in touch with a very intimate pain as a society as human beings and very aware that we need to cleanse this blood poisoning this corruption out of our system or else it could bring us to ruin it could end us it could inflict upon us 
that never-ending um, dance of life and rebirth. I mean that if I would have a client coming to me with this kind of symbol for their new year, I would tell them that they would need to change who they are over the next year and be very aware of what they do and how they create things and the light that they are spreading, the signature that they as human beings are leaving behind them. That it is a time to concentrate on purification and cleansing and cleaning out the table, so to speak, you know, going into a house cleaning and taking out of your life, out of your character, out of who you are and what you do, everything that maybe once provided comfort, maybe once was needed for your development, but is no longer that. Now it provides pain. Now it provides, it as if you were taking a substance that was maybe helping you deal with some kind of pain in the past, but because dosage has increased, we have grown and expanded. Now the same substance that was medicinal to us in the past has become toxic. Look at plastic, for instance. How it helped in the beginning and was considered a wonder. And what a menace it is today. As it expanded and, grow, and, and grew. So, it is a time that we need to leave things behind, to walk away from things, to cleanse things from who we are and what we do, and remain with less, but less that is worth much more to us, that is pure and clean, that amends for past karma. And it is a time that we are very much in touch with the corruption and the pain inflicted because of that corruption. We are more aware of the weather, climate changing. We are aware of the sixth extinction happening, mass extinction of animals worldwide. We are aware of ecological systems collapsing. We are aware of the unbearable suffering of uncountable animals because of what we do and how we decide to live as a society. Things that have once helped us grow to where we are today are now the same things that are poisoning us. And even if we are not part of that corruption, we could still go down because of it. The myth of Chiron, born to Zeus and a nymph, Zeus didn't want his uh, jealous wife Hera to find out that he's fooling around with that nymph. So he came to the nymph as a horse. Talking about wild mythology sex. And, and had made love with her in the form of a horse. Her child was half horse, half man, a kentaur. But unlike under kent other kentaurs, he was immortal, very wise and intelligent. In fact, the son of Zeus, king of the gods. He became the father of medicine and music and sciences, the teacher of teachers. In fact, so respected was he that jealous Hera could not stand that one of her um, bastard, uh, uh, husband's bastard sons is so famous. So she asked Cupid, Eros, to send a poisoned arrow uh, onto the flesh of Chiron, the wound of which never ceases to pain and never passes away. And with all his knowledge in science and medicine, Chiron could not rid himself of nor the pain nor the wound, until begging the gods to free him from his immortality so he could reincarnate and free himself from the suffering. Chiron himself was not corrupt, but nevertheless he paid the price of the corruption. We could see it 
that way, he paid the price of the corruption, or we could see it as a necessary development in Chiron's own personal development, own personal evolution, in his own consciousness of his soul, which is a bit more optimistic. But we don't want to get there. We need to deal with that corruption. Also, around 2019, 2020. And the beautiful thing is about uh, Chiron in Aries is that it brings the pain home. And that the only solution to that pain is the individual, Aries. It is about personal effort. In fact, the only way we could heal is by our own personal effort. If drops won't sweeten, the ocean would remain salty forever. And don't tell me that it will, because I know of drops that sweeten all the time and oceans that receive that sweetened water all the time. In fact, droplets that are able to sweeten themselves are the ones that ascend way on to the heavens and then pour beautiful, nourishing water onto the earth. Wow, I like that analogy. Don't you, Georgia? It's a beautiful analogy. Okay, I need to remember it. Anyway, so we're having this buildup of energy towards Wednesday, Thursday, when we're having the uh, full moon, super moon, last super moon for 2019 in zero degrees Libra. Um, and a grand earth trine in the sky. Amazing day energetically. Um, I would say ride the wave. Utilize it, harness it in your life, whatever you're doing, whoever you are. And if you have time, go outside to nature, connect. Think of the blossoming that you want to have in your life. And if you are in the sound and hemisphere, think of the focus that you're going to need to preserve yourself well through this winter. What you need to actually hone on, like honing your edge. So your road would be not like an, uh, a, a truck on ice, but more like an ice skate. You know, very precise, like a sword in water. And in the Northern Hemisphere, Europe, United States, Mediterranean, think of the blossoming you would like in your life. Think of the fruitfulness that you would want it to later on produce in your life. And try and give it a few moments in your life. Well, other than that, it's an intense week sexually. We're having uh, uh, Mars trying uh, Pluto. Amazing time for sex and intimacy. It's also a time that we could be changing our actions or that our actions can be changing who we are psychologically and emotionally. It's a two-way street, baby. It's a two-way street. If you are in a relationship, be more um, gentle with your partner towards uh, the end of this week and during the weekend as we're having Venus squaring Mars. Um, try and harness that energy to intimacy, uh, sexuality, and just attraction, passion, um, or something physical. Um, and it's a great time, if you're not in a relationship, to put yourself out there. To go the extra mile and, and just have fun with it. That's about everything I had to tell you for this week, for private consultations or lessons or joining my courses. Of course, you're welcome to uh, um, contact me. I want to thank you for sharing this video, for uh, commenting on it. And on behalf of Georgia and myself, I hope you're going to have a wonderful new year 
and a wonderful new week. May you live long, prosper. Bye-bye.